All right, so I've got one of these um, military MEP-017A generators here. Um, gonna retrofit it for uh, the newer voltage regulator in it. Sorry, this one's so dirty, I just dug it out of a snowbank yesterday and uh, brought it in to get it up and running. Um, here I've got a temporary fuel set up uh, to get gas into it to make it run. So the, um, the voltage regulator is behind this little panel right here. Uh, you can take these screws out as well. They're spring loaded and this lets you get in and access a lot of the wiring that's down inside of it. So what I have chosen to do on this one right here sets your output. Uh, and I have chosen the uh, 240 volt one phase two wire. It says right here it puts it out on, on L2 and L3. That's uh, these two jumpers right here. So that will be our power output when we're done. Um, this is another important part right here. This is the uh, uh, adjustment resistor for the output. If you look on the face of this voltage increase right here. So this adjusts for your reading your voltage coming out. So I did some research online and what I bought was one of these um, New Age SX460 AVRs. Uh, so there's what I got and in the back of it there's a wiring diagram. <clears throat> and so if we're looking at this wiring diagram really we're only looking at six wires to connect this thing. Uh, we've got two wires that come off of the windings that's the sense and this also provides the power for the unit to run. Uh, it comes back and goes through a five amp fuse is drawn in uh, and that goes into pins seven and eight on the AVR and then it basically reads that voltage and it sends out a voltage to excite the field windings to create the electricity as it's running. So uh, the F1 and F2 are two windings that or two connections that go out to excite the field. So that's field one and field two wires. And then there's also a voltage adjustment resistor on here uh, between pins one and two. And if you look, it's supposed to be a 1K ohm variable resistor. So that's on the, the aftermarket uh, voltage regulator. So when I started looking, um, Here's the windings in the, and the wiring diagram for the MEP-017A generator. And this is the wiring diagram for it. And up on this top left corner, you'll see the, the connections for the field, the connections for the windings coming out, and then the voltage regulator, and then there's a variable resistor for the adjustment. So if we follow this all out, you can see that on pins one and two are the sense lines that come off of the windings. And pins uh, five and six go up to the field windings. And then pins uh, three and four are what go out to the variable resistor for the adjustment. So I've already got this one installed. It's behind this panel right here. I've taken the screws out. Let me grab the one that I pulled out of here. <clears throat> so basically what we're looking at is there was uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six wires that were connected to it. I went through and relabeled all of them uh, by looking at the face of this. Uh, there's different ones here, pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, pin six. So off of the wiring diagrams, I relabeled my wires. Basically took the five and the six. These are my field wires. I added a fuse to them. So this is my field wire fuse. So I've got the uh, wire 20 is what it was labeled. So there's our, if we look back here, look at these top numbers here, uh, wire 20 and 21. So I've got wire 20 and 21 and they connect up to the field, so this is wire 20 and wire 21. 
they connect up to the field connections, F1 and F2. And then uh, pin 24, wire 24, and wire 27, pin 1 and 2. Those go to my um, pin 7 and 8, so wire 24 and 27 are what we're looking for. So 27 comes to my fuse, so this is my sense line. And then my two lines come for 24 and 27, pin 7 and 8. Those go to the sense and the power input. And then I followed this resistor is only a 750 ohm resistor, so I had to um, look and make sure, but 750 ohms is close enough to the 1K that it still works okay. So the wires that come off of this, I traced and followed them down. And those went to pins 26 and 28, 26 and 28. And so 26 and 28 both went back in place of the resistor back here. And it had a jumper on it. Come to find out the windings for where the sense is coming in is actually 110. So you need to put this jumper in place way back in here. I moved the jumper. The, the resistor came with this jumper on it, so I just had to remove it and put it in to the 110 volt operation setting. And the other jumper that I had to move was it was preset for 50 hertz, and this is a 60 hertz unit. So um, I had to move that jumper to the 60 hertz setting. And then as far as the adjustments, there's a resistor right back in here. This is the output uh, voltage adjustment, so once you get it fired up, uh, you have to adjust this until you get your 110 volts. And then the stability, if it's waving up and down, the stability adjustment is over on this side, right back inside of here. So that's pretty much it. It was a real simple, easy setup, and it works really well. So you might notice that the voltage increase decrease knob works backwards now that it's hooked up to this different one. So it's a minor uh, adjustment that you have to make.